Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking today? Uh, Gatlin's Fall Harvest Oktoberfest. Mm. Today we're going to be bringing to you 1974's Frightmare, or sometimes called Cover Up. It is directed by Pete Walker, who kind of started off with these schlocky kind of sexploitation type <laughs> movies, then got into some real decent horror. He did The Comeback, which we had covered quite a while ago. Sheila Keith is in this, and she was also in The Comeback. She's kind of like that Mrs. Doubtfire kind yeah. of woman. Hello! Rupert Davies is in this, and he was in a lot of stuff, but yeah. we just got to mention Dracula Has Risen From The Grave. So the movie starts off in black and white. This uh, gentleman going to this kind of trailer. I'm in a bit of a mess. You said I could come back. You see the interior, but you don't see who's in there with them. And then mm -hmm. this guy all with his head bashed in, yeah. he's sitting there all <laughs> day. <laughs> We're then show inside of a court two figures in shadows who are being spoken to by the judge with that sick <laughs> wig, sick that wig. British wig thing. <laughs> judge is sentencing them, committed in a mental institution. We're then introduced to one of the main characters, Debbie, and she's 15 years old and she's a bit of a rebel. She's got this kind of badass boyfriend <laughs> that's in this British biker game. Yeah. yeah. They're in the disco. <laughs> ding, 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 kind of, this ding. disco is awesome. Like, yeah. man, I want to be in this disco drinking and dancing. <laughs> it looks like tons of fun. And just by looking at her, the bartender's like, yeah, I'm sorry, you're you're not of age. You're underage. I can't serve mm -hmm. you. She goes back to her boyfriend and completely lies. What? He said what? He called me a young tot. He wouldn't <laughs> serve me. <laughs> Later that night, when the bar closes, the bartender comes out and the whole gang kind of surrounds him and just beat the shit out of this guy, just take him, take him to town. <laughs> then they flee because the cops are coming. We're then introduced to Debbie's older sister, Jackie, who's at this dinner party. She's hitting it off with this young psychiatrist and they decide, well, okay, maybe we'll go out sometime. She goes back home and sees that Debbie has just gotten home and it's very late and she starts chastising her. She comes back at her and says, well, you leave at all weird hours of the night. I have no clue where you're going. Where are you going anyways? Yeah. And she doesn't tell her, but she gets up and leaves. Yeah. She drives way out to the country to this kind of farmhouse. She's visiting what appears to be, well, her parents. She brings this package when you don't really know what's in it. A couple of days later, Jackie gets a phone call from her dad calling in secret. He's like at an old style British payphone yeah. to the booth. He says he's worried about his wife, takes out this package and unwraps it and says, well, see what your mother's been doing. And yeah. he shows her what's inside, but we don't see what it is. She does. You see her reaction and she's like appalled. We then see this woman at this mysterious farmhouse find out she's there for a tarot card reading. She flips over the death card, right? <laughs> Jackie's new boyfriend, the psychiatrist, he's supposed to come over to pick up Jackie for a date. Debbie's there, and so he ends up talking with her and sort of trying to sort out... Their problems. Yeah, so. exactly. Debbie leads her boyfriend to this back alley, and there's a car there. It opens up to the trunk, and there's the dead body of that bartender, that poor bastard bartender yeah. from the beginning. Debbie fucking killed the guy. Meanwhile, Jackie's uh, psychiatrist boyfriend, he starts doing some digging into the family. Turns out that it's Jackie's parents were in, the, in a mental institution, and it was them two who were put away. Somebody else comes to that farmhouse for a reading, for a tarot card reading. She's kind of had enough, this woman. She stands up to walk away, and all the doors are kind of locked, and she uncovers this uh, blanket over a doorway, and we don't see what she sees, yeah, but, but... she's terrified. Yeah, she's terrified. Dorothy pulls out a hot poker from the fireplace, and just rams it right into her stomach. Pales her. Poor dad, he's just coming home from like work or something. Early. <laughs> yeah. And he comes into the house of this shit. And she looks up and she's like, help me. Oh, what did you do? What did you do to her? Debbie and her boyfriend flee the scene basically, right? Because they're getting chased by the cops now. Brings her boyfriend to this deserted sort of farmhouse. He's freezing his bullocks off. Yeah. <laughs> And so he goes into the farmhouse to find out what's going on. And that's where we're going to end it, right there. Because there's a lot, of, lot more crazy shit that happens. It kind of, it almost mirrors the comeback in terms of the way it's written, right? And the way it's unveiled. Everything kind of 
it slowly gets revealed. Yeah, there's not mm -hmm. one big reveal. Yeah. There's, there's little small reveals throughout the movie which kind of clues it, you, helps you piece all this together. They give you little hints that like make you question something very slightly, mm -hmm. but then you're thinking, ah, that's probably nothing, that's probably whatever, I'm reading too much into that little line she just said, but later on it's like, oh no, I wasn't, yeah. like, that was a big clue. It's one of those movies that it may take two watches, right, to get yeah. everything. Because it's very easy to miss this, to miss certain clues. So many different little plot lines, like there's the plot with the mysterious old couple at the farmhouse, their daughter bringing them these packages. Then there's the plot line of Debbie being a misfit with this biker guy. Mm -hmm. and then there's the psychiatrist boyfriend plot. At the end, like, oh, okay, it's all related. Yeah, yeah, it all makes sense, yeah. right? It's a tragic story, too, yeah. right? Because the poor dad... He's, he's distraught throughout the entire movie just trying to seemingly keep his life and his wife's life together, right? Yeah. They don't want to get found out for what's going on. He's also getting dragged into the worst parts of this ag again, yeah. right? Yeah. And he knows what's going to happen. But he just loves his wife so much and he just doesn't want to see anything happen. Yeah, that's what the neat aspect about this movie is like how love corrupts in a way because <laughs> yeah. like he is not doing anything just covering it up for her because he loves her so much uh, the directing and the acting for this movie are really superb super superb. <laughs> sheila keith as as dorothy yates she does such a great job of portraying like two sides of madness mm -hmm. like the side of madness where she's kind of like confused and and upset about what she's going through, but then there's the other side where she's just like loving it. And yeah. Like, loves doing this to people. The and, madness is actually it, taken yeah. over, right? Yeah, like that scene where she's <laughs> drilling. And, she is terrifying. Put it this way I wouldn't want to be locked in a fucking room with her. No, that's exactly. For sure. <laughs> I wouldn't want a tarot card reading from her. <laughs> no. The way it's directed, it's intriguing. The angles that he uses, right? And the, the cuts, the shots. I think they're awesome. It's framed in a way where you don't see too much. And Rupert Davies as the husband is, again, like, he compliments Sheila Keith's performance so well because mm -hmm. he's so believable as being, like, this poor, distraught <laughs> man. Like, by the end, where he's just... <laughs> he's just fucking... Disheveled, dead. and he's had his hairs all over the place. <laughs> like, not one performance seems like a performance, right? So it feels real. It feels very real. Even right? the girls, too, yeah. right? The, the whole yin and yang between the two of them. Because they're so opposite. Yeah, <clears throat> and you, you feel it, too, right? They're always bitching at each other. Uh, settings that they have. You mentioned the disco. Man, fuck, that looks like fun. I wish yeah. I was in that disco. Same with the farmhouse. Yeah. That farmhouse looks awesome. That yeah. giant hearth yeah. and everything with the fireplace. Like, yeah. fuck. I wish I lived there, yeah. not with the wife, yeah. but... Yeah, but it's, it's a really cool <laughs> setting. The university type, but they're like fancy apartment. Before anyone even opens their mouths to say a line, you already know what these people are all about right. just by the setting they're in. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly how they live. This whole idea of people having gone away to either jail or to an asylum to be rehabilitated and they get out, yeah. but they really aren't. Sex offender released back into society and they show a picture of the guy yeah. and say, well, then why did you release him if you have to let us know? Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah, so it mirrors real yeah. life, yeah. you know, sadly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you want like a really good, smart, well-paced, like British slasher film, because mm -hmm. it's kind of half slasher, half mystery, mm -hmm. really check out Frightmare. The name has nothing to do with the movie at all, like Frightmare, you think it has to do with nightmares or dreams yeah. or something, but that's not, why you, not at all. That's why cover-up makes more sense. So if you're a fan of like the comeback, other movies by Pete Walker and you haven't seen Frightmare, check it out. Yep. And uh, keep drinking. And eating. <laughs>